All of the music for today's Mass can be found in your online worship aid. Please join me in singing the gathering song, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, our beautiful gospel that we're going to hear today is very often read at funerals. And it's a gospel about a home waiting for us. And that home is heaven. A home that is filled with peace and love and hope. And Jesus reminds us that he has that home and he's waiting for each one of us. It's only a matter of time before we all return home to the house of the Father. I invite us now at the beginning of our liturgy to be mindful of our own sinfulness. For the times we have failed to love and failed to forgive, we now ask the Lord for his pardon and his peace. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, co constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained to get to the Hebrews because of their widows, where they were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was accepted by the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith in the Holy Spirit. Also, Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Pernemius, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And the living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious. And whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, that stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, 
Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Most of us, I believe, have heard the term sacred space. We use it to designate a physical area or maybe a state of mind that is special, holy, sacred. The sanctuary candle near the tabernacle tells us that this is sacred space. A velvet cord in the front of a shrine indicates this particular area is holy. By removing our shoes, genuflecting, bowing to a person or a religious site, we acknowledge its sacredness. Sometimes the majesty of a snow-capped mountain quietness of the wilderness, or a mystical winter sunset can create for us a sacred space. When we clear our minds, push all the world out for a few moments, we go out to our window and look out in our garden and pray to God. That quiet time is sacred space. Our church is a sacred space. For Christians, a sacred space is where we meet the Lord. In sacred space, we meet truth, goodness, and beauty. Today's Easter scriptures show us how we, the people of God, are also a sacred space. In our second reading, we are invited. Like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own so that you may announce the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his own wonderful light. Each one of you, a living stone, comes together to build a sacred space, not so much a physical church, but a community, a community of the baptized, a community of the believing. The living stones of faith that the community share allow us to pray together, carry one another's worries, uplift one another, and find strength in coming together. Now in the time of the apostles, the temple of Jerusalem must have held the same aura that we have for Notre Dame Cathedral or the Sistine Chapel. 
once viewing, walking through these places, we experience the sacred. For the Jewish people, the temple represented the presence of God among his chosen people. In our own churches, the tabernacle, that is the confines of it, bear the blessed sacrament. It is a sacred space, a place of awe, mystery, divinity. In this sacred space, this place of prayer, we are in the real presence of Christ, in churches all over the world, from that moment of his resurrection until his return in glory. As I said at the beginning of our liturgy, our gospel reading is one that is very often used at funerals. Jesus says those beautiful words to his disciples, words of comfort to all of us. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, what I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Here Jesus alludes to the quintessential sacred space, heaven, or being with God. That image of being in the house of God strikes a deep chord within each one of us. At the end of our lives, we know who awaits us in heaven. And that can bring here on earth a profound sense of tranquility. Knowing that people that we love or have known here on earth also await us in this sacred place brings a profound sense of joy. My friends, the scriptures today call to mind sacred spaces of temples and churches and mountains and tabernacles. In the gospel, Jesus describes himself as a kind of sacred space in which the Father dwells and works. A second reading describes the Christian community as a sacred place, living stones built into a spiritual house with Jesus as the capstone. My friends, we are a holy, royal, priestly space in which the Holy Spirit can reside. We need only to look at the scriptures to see that it is our duty to create the space and the time when the Spirit will put us in touch with all that is good and beautiful and true. Together we now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all the ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus told his disciples to not allow their hearts to be troubled, for he would prepare a dwelling place for them. Here in one of God's many dwelling places, let us place our needs in God's care and allow God's mercy to soothe our troubles. For the church, that we may faithfully follow Christ, who is the way and the truth and the life, obeying his command to love one another and showing the world the way to God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders and citizens of powerful countries, that their commitment to peace and justice inspire others we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for those who are in need of our prayers for those who are homebound or suffering from chronic illnesses for the impaired by addiction for all who are close to death and for those who suffer alone that they may know the constant presence of the holy spirit we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith formation students who will receive their first Holy Communion this weekend, that they continue to grow in our faith and someday lead the future of our church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that our faith community may be renewed in mission and purpose, welcoming the stranger, serving the needy, proclaiming the good news to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of John and Claire Shannon, Robin Mandel, the D D Ladone family, and Rosemary, Rosemary Lavetri, for whom this math is, Mass is offered, for all of our beloved dead, especially Robert J. Schoen, whose funeral was celebrated this past week, and for our own intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and mercy, we thank you for the gift of faith. Listen to the petitions we present to you for all those in need and grant these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice, have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to proclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old one destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers would enter the host, sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as together they acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he says the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. Celebrate the memorial of the saving. 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Maria Goretti, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Sean our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you in their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from formal ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a few announcements for you. If you've not had a chance to contribute to this year's Catholic Appeal, please do so as soon as possible. We have reached our assessment, so from now on approximately 50% of paid pledges will come back to our parish. Every gift matters. We give thanks to all those of you who have already contributed. The annual St. Vincent de Paul Baby Shower will run through May 28th. Unwrapped new gifts can be left at either church. Please see the bulletin for more information. Our May procession and crownings of Mary will take place Sunday, May 14th at the 9.30 a.m. Mass at St. Maria Goretti, and on Monday, May 15th at 1 p.m. at Our Lady the Assumption Church. And finally, as always, we thank you so much for your continued financial support to Ave Maria Parish. You can make a gift to Ave Maria Parish by going to our website and making an online donation or mailing or dropping off your gift to our parish office on Grove Street. We depend on your donations and stewardship to broadcast these Masses. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. And may Almighty God now bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. As we go forth, please join me in singing, Lead Me, Lord. Mm -hmm. 